internet friends, welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, it's Magic Brad here, Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got a friend online here. I just connected with him a little while ago, and he's over on the Eastern Time Zone. His name is Cle- Gle- Gleb, right? Yep, that's right. That's Gleb, right. like Glenn with a B. Glenn with a B. That's the easiest way to remember it. Gleb. Got it. And how do you say your last name? Seporski. Yeah, that's harder. <laughs> Se- Sep- Seporski? Yeah, there you go. That's pretty close. Dun, yeah, dun, yay. <laughs> My last name is Goodham, and I don't use it because some people call me Guidium, and so I just use yeah. Magic Brad. That seems to work. And I got yep. my little Magic Lounge sign up here. <laughs> nice. So the initial interview here is just to find out who you are, what you do, and all that kind of thing. So here's the first part. Are you married? you got kids? You live in Ohio, I think you said? Yeah, I live in Ohio. I'm married. I don't have kids, so my wife and I... I've been married since 2003, and we've known each other since 19. So it's been quite a while. How long have you lived so, in Ohio? About five years since I got a job here at Ohio State. Okay. Well, so you work for the, the college? Yes. I'm a professor at Ohio State University. Aha. My wife used to work at the University of Minnesota. She was a Spanish teacher there. Ah, there you go. That's... So you know what it's like to be married to an academic, and so you can relate to you know, the academic lifestyle. Exactly. It's definitely different um, because you've got a different window of when you work and when you can play and it's definitely a different approach. And also the thinking, the thinking is different. A good friend of ours is also a grade school teacher and uh, just, uh, just in academia, it's a little bit different than your entrepreneurial thing. So what is it you've got going on? I looked a little bit on your website. It's about intentional living, I think is what it was called. Yeah. So what I have going on, so I do research in psychology and behavioral economics, and basically how do we think, feel, and behave effectively? The only things in life that we have control over, really, is how we think, how we feel, and how we behave. So our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. We don't have control over our environment. We don't have control over other people. And the only things we can do is react to our environment. And folks often don't seem to notice that. They don't seem to notice that we can't control other things. And they don't really work on addressing and improving the only things they can control in life, their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And so Intentional Insights is an organization devoted to popularizing. It's a nonprofit. It's devoted to popularizing the science of how we can control the only things in life we can control our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So that's what it's about. It's at intentionalinsights.org. And yeah, that's what it's I a, focus on. That's what I popularize. It's interesting thinking about that because a lot of people do end up doing the blame game, you know. Um, are you familiar with T. Harv Eker? No. He's, he's got a book called The Millionaire Mind, and it's, it's okay. about uh, never blame, complain, and justify. Mm-hmm. And he says that uh, the, the, that's beyond your control of other people's actions and things. So what you're talking about is like you wake up and you're in a bad mood, change your mood and you have a better day. Or if you're yes. starting to think about like you, you see the negative commercials or there's that whole Hillary Trump thing. And if your mind starts going into, you know, negative, angry stuff, you can change your own thinking. And mm-hmm. so are you sort of an advocate of like uh, create a vision and, and then put the things in place? I, I call it like, like algebra. <laughs> where you, you know where it's going and you just put the things in place to get there. Yes. So you want to figure out your long-term goals. Mm-hmm. And that includes your long-term goals for your emotions. That's something that many people don't think about. So you talked about the Hillary Trump thing or you know how you think about your money. If you don't think about how you will feel in the future, then you will not have the emotions that you want. And our emotions, what the recent research shows, guide about 80% of our decision-making. So 80% of who we are is emotions. 
folks tend to think of themselves as rational, reasonable creatures, but really we are driven by our emotions, by how we feel yeah. rather than how we think. And we can change that. And we can plan to change for these things. You know, when you say, oh, get away from, you know, negative thought patterns about Trump and Hillary or you know, wake up in a negative mood in the morning, it's kind of easy to say, but very hard to do. It's like when a doctor right. says, lose weight. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good advice, right? But how do you do it? And what we focus on intentional insights is helping folks get research-based strategies for changing their feelings to match their long-term goals. Okay, is that almost like an act as if kind of thing? Because uh, like me understand what you mean by act as if. Well, Tony Robbins talks about like changing your state. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not in a upbeat mood or if you you do not believe that you can actually start making a significant income, you change your state of mind and your thinking pattern. So then now you start reacting to things mm -hmm. as if that was taking place. And it's a right. little more probable that it'll happen rather than if you act all, oh, I don't have any money and I'm not really healthy. And, and you start, <laughs> yeah, pretty soon you you, start you're not going to attract theory. people that sure. are going to help you with something like that. Sure. Yes. Uh, so that Tony Robbins idea of changing your mind is one path to get there. And there's a broader technique behind that called priming. So priming is basically a technique, research-based technique, where we prime ourselves with certain stimuli and a certain mindset. And we think about you know, if we want to also orient toward, let's say, getting more money. We prime ourselves to focus on various ways of getting more money, and then we naturally look for these opportunities. So our emotions look for opportunities to make more money. And that's one way of doing it. That's only one of many paths that we can take. Of course, we then also need to investigate how we feel about making more money. Because often, when people try to put themselves in the mindset of, oh, you know, I am going to be rich or I am rich, they have negative feelings about wealth that, that may inhibit their ability to actually get this wealth. Mm -hmm. So they need to investigate and look within themselves if this is a mindset that's suitable for them. Sometimes it's not, and people don't realize that it's not, and they have this internal cognitive dissonance, you know, something like if you tell yourself, I am rich, but then you don't, a certain part of you doesn't believe that you're rich or doesn't want you to be rich for some reason. Are you talking it's, about like the subconscious might be in there and it's kind of telling you, nah, you can never do that because it's something that you learned early on in childhood that you probably don't consciously remember? So subconscious is a part of it. And what the recent research shows is that the subconscious conscious model doesn't really apply. So it's been superseded. It's been shown to be um, not accurate by recent research. It's quite a bit more, the, our thinking pattern is quite a bit more complex than that. So we have two broad thinking patterns, what are called the autopilot system and the intentional system, or system one and system two. The autopilot system is our emotional system. That's the 80% system. That's most of what we think. And it's, sort of like the subconscious, except in the subconscious model of the Freudian model, you can't actually reach your subconscious with your conscious mind. And what research shows is that we can actually speak to our autopilot system using the intentional system, using our rational thinking system, which is about 20% of our decision-making, 20% of what we do. Yeah, so that's, so, what, that's what I was saying, that like the subconscious may, um, the, the emotional system, there might be something that's that's deep below that for some reason I'm angry because I see this person at the mall and something just irritates me about him. I don't know what it is. And then you yeah. find out below that it's because that person was carrying a cane and you, your dad used to beat the hell out of you with a cane. But you didn't remember yeah. it because you suppressed it. Definitely. Okay. And... What the research shows is that we can get at these, at these memories, we can get at these emotions. Mm -hmm. So, for example, some folks who want to be wealthy, they may be inhibited from actually pursuing their goals, not by the external environment so much as their emotions. Right. You know, they feel, they may feel that they're not deserving of this wealth. And mm -hmm. then their emotions will be inhibiting them from pursuing the actions that cause them to get wealth they will be sabotaging themselves. And that's what happens. People sabotage themselves 
and they undermine their ability to be rich. Or, you know, let's say with the Hillary Trump uh, situation, they may not want to learn about what's going on there. They may feel bad about it, but they just can't get away from the television or from the internet. And they mm -hmm. keep clicking refresh, 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 you know, what's going on there, the Electoral College, you know, just elected Donald Trump as president. And many people may not have wanted to be aware of that, but they read all the news on it. Now, why do they do that? Well, it's because the news helps them address their anxiety. And the news is essentially a therapeutic kind of mechanism that they use, this anxiety management technique. And they don't realize it. They don't realize that that's what's going on, that that's why they're reaching it. Is that, that um, also... Their, hold, hold on for a second. And that their anxiety may be better addressed through other means, but they don't realize that that's what's going on. Okay, what do you mean that it can be addressed through other means? What are these other means? Sure. So, for example, they can recognize that they don't have control over the election process. They don't really have control over who gets elected, Donald okay. Trump or Hillary Clinton or whoever. They don't have control over Donald Trump's actions. So recognizing what, that they only have control over their own reactions to what Donald Trump is doing or that Hillary Clinton is doing, that is the fundamental method of addressing this anxiety because it's people's anxiety that causes them to feel bad. It's not what Donald Trump does. He's not responsible for your emotions. You're responsible for your emotions in the end. And it's, you know, everyone is accountable for how they feel. And you can address how you feel to have a more healthy mind state. Got it. That's what emotional management is about. Okay. Well, before I ask my final question, uh, which is my favorite one, and uh, if you could just express how we get a hold of you and learn more about your organization and your uh, what you're teaching and things of that sort, how you go about it. Sure. So folks can go to intentionalinsights.org and find out all the information they need to know. That's intentionalinsights.org. Or they can email me personally at gleb at intentionalinsights.org. My information is also on the website. If they want to check out my own website, it's glebsipursky.com. And that info, just my name, and that info should be, you know, you can Google it, and uh, you can pull it up easily as well. I'll, I'll try and Google it if I can figure out how to spell it, but I'll look it up and I'll put it in this video. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> so... My favorite question, and that is the big why question. Why is it you're doing this, and why aren't you like a gamer, or why aren't you like yes. a snowboard teacher, or why aren't you, why are you doing this? Yeah, so great question. <laughs> and the reason I'm passionate about this is that I see folks around me every day making really poor decisions because their emotions are getting in the way. Because, you know, families who are having arguments with each other husband and wife, making really arguments that are not healthy for either of them and really don't serve either of their goals, but they don't know how to go about it differently. People who are trying to make money, but who can't make money because their emotions get in the way, they're inhibited. Mm -hmm. You know, someone cusses off at their boss because they weren't able to manage their emotions. They get fired and then their life gets really hurt. So I saw people like that when I was... The reason I began doing this is because when I began to teach, I saw that my students were getting a lot of benefit, but people around me who I wasn't reaching were just making such poor decisions. And the political spectrum as well. We have such a proliferation of, let's say, fake news and people believing in fake news, being triggered it by it and sharing it, not because they want to believe in fake things, but because it's emotionally comforting for them to believe in these things. And so I want to help people make decisions that serve them in their long-term interests, even if their emotions aren't intuitively predisposed to these decisions. I want to help them manage their emotions to help them make good decisions and reach their goals. Okay, well that again, uh, almost every one of these videos I do when I ask the why question, it's to help other people. So again, two thumbs up for uh, what I'm doing here. It's finding more people who want to help other people. So cool, there's hope for humanity, yeah. I love it. <laughs> So, Gleb, I appreciate you taking the time of the day at Synergy Cafe. I'm going to sign this off, and then what happens with this video is it goes up to YouTube, and then I take that embed code, put it on blogs, and I take the blogs, and I propagate them out to social media with hashtags and keywords. And if you see them online, if you could uh, like, comment, and share, and uh, propagate do. out to the world. So thanks again for taking the time, Gleb. Sure.
This was great, Brad. Peace. Peace.